I had a request to show the derivation of the theta equation and I mentioned in class that I don't go through the derivations of a lot of the equations in class because class is short but the derivations are all in the textbook and I'm always happy to do videos for the derivations so I got a request for this one and I'm going to review a little bit of what I talked about in class and then connect it to the final equation. So the equilibrium expression for a protein and ligand coming together is P plus L forming the PL complex. So this is your protein, here's your ligand, you've got your protein ligand complex and that's your equilibrium expression. So you can set up your equilibrium constant which they call Ka for association as your reactant, or sorry, your products over your reactants. And that's, you're talking about the association of P and L together, so PL would be on top, the PL complex would be on the numer in the numerator, and P and L separately would be in the denominator. So let's go from here and let us cross multiply. So we got Ka times P times L equals PL. So all we did here was cross multiply. There's always a one below numbers um, to convert them into fractions. So that's what you get from the cross multiplication. And we're going to set this aside for now for a second and just introduce the concept of theta, which is fractional saturation. It's the binding sites that are occupied over the total binding site. So that means that all the binding sites occupied, that's represented by the PL complex, and then all of the sites are all of those spots that are bound, plus all of those spots that are not yet bound. So just the protein hanging out by itself. So we have this set up up here. We're going to replace the PL here with this term over here. So I'll rewrite it down here, Ka times P times L over PL plus P. And I've just switched this over. This is equal to theta. And there's another PL term down here. So let's replace that with KAPL as well. So KAPL over, and instead of writing PL, I'm going to write KAPL plus P equals theta. So we've just been substituting based on this relationship up here. So now we can start actually removing a couple things from the equation. We see that there is just the protein concentration in every term of this fraction. So we can remove it from every term here. You could, if you want to think um, mathematically, you're dividing every term in here by P. So that's totally legit. If you're treating everything exactly the same and dividing it all by the same value, then what you're deriving is um, still the same th relationship. So when you divide everything by P here, you know, there's a one that ends up here because you don't lose a spot there. That one exists. So let's rewrite this. Whoops. Let's rewrite this out um, with those terms canceled out. So with those terms canceled out, we've got theta equals K 
aka L over K A L P. Oops, not P, sorry. Plus one. So if you kind of thought about it, I think about it as canceling them out, and then there's the one right there. But if you think about it more appropriately, like literally you're dividing every term by P, um, because you're dividing this top term by by P, there is really a one there, but you don't write it down because it's just multiplied. Same thing with that term in the denominator. So now that you've got this, you can divide every term by Ka. So divide this top term by Ka and you end up with L. Divide this term in the denominator by Ka and you get L. And then divide that one by Ka and you get one over Ka. And friends, we have just arrived. The first equation that I wrote down for you that I said you don't have to know the derivation, you don't have to do the derivation on an exam. But here we did, we did the derivation and I think the derivations very much help you understand where these equations are coming from. If you don't look at the derivations, you're like, what is this? Who cares? I don't understand. Did it fall from the sky? I don't want you to feel that way. So we just derived it. And we also know that Ka and Kd have an inverse relationship. So in class, I did actually talk about this quite a bit. But remember, if you're talking about the equilibrium constant of association, the dissociation is just going to be the inverse of that. It's just going to be flipped. So this term can also be written as KD. And that, again, was one of the equations that I just gave to you on your equation sheet to memorize. But that is the derivation of it. So hopefully you found this helpful. Um, if you have any questions, please follow up with me and on Piazza or comment here. I can answer on comments on YouTube. All right. Thank you.